Hey guys, it's Melissa. Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title, in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about flying with your service dog. I just want to say, I just filmed this video and I was getting towards the end and I realized that my camera cut off, so I'm a little ticked off about that. I would also like to say that if the audio sounds a little weird, I have my AC on. It is extremely hot, so please bear with me. I hope you can hear me okay. And also, I'd like to apologize because I am sick. I do have a cold, so if I sound a little weird or if I'm sniffling, that is why. <sighs> my apologies. So, today I'm going to talk to you guys about flying with your service dog because I know it can be a nerve-wracking thing, whether it's your first time or maybe your tenth time or whatever. It can be nerve-wracking, so here are my tips and kind of my experience with flying with your service dog. For those who do not know, I have a service dog, her name is Daisy, and she has accompanied me for the last two years and will be coming this year as well, so I will be flying for the third year with my service dog. And so this is just kind of my experience and my tips from what I know. I'm actually leaving on Wednesday, July 10th, so I'm trying to get this video filmed, edited, and uploaded before I leave, so that way when I do leave, I can focus on my vlogs for that trip. I would also like to mention that this can kind of apply to um, if you're flying with your ESA, however, I've only flown with my service dog, so that's what I'm going to be referring to in this video. So really quickly, I have five main pointers that I just want to go over before I get into the nitty gritty categories. I will try to have the categories in the description when um, they start, but I really recommend watching this whole video so you can be prepared um, and you don't miss anything. And really quick before we start, I did make a video last year on what to pack when traveling with your dog. I showed you guys everything that I was packing for Daisy. I was staying for a week out in Utah. So if you want to go ahead and watch that, I really recommend that. Um, I did bring a lot of stuff and this year I am cutting it down. So yeah. So the first thing is knowing the difference between a service dog and an emotional support animal or otherwise known as ESA. This in general is important to know because the two are totally completely different things. So that's important. But for flying it's important because there's different policies and regulations for the two. So if you don't know really briefly, a service dog is a dog that is task trained to help mitigate the handler's disability. An emotional support animal or ESA is a animal that provides just comfort or emotional support to the handler. They do not need to be trained, they do not need to be task trained, they are just your pet that comforts you. Um, both are considered medical equipment, however, like I said, they are two totally different things. Second, I would like to mention that for flying, PSDs, or Psychiatric Service Dogs, are grouped with ESAs. It's this huge thing in the service dog community because they are held, Psychiatric Service Dogs, to the same level of training and expectations as any other service dog, but unfortunately for flying they do get grouped with ESAs. So it's important to know what kind of service dog you have, which I feel like if you are a true service dog handler, you would know. The third thing is that the ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act does not cover flying. It covers the airport, however, for the airplane, that law is actually the ACAA, or the Air Carrier Access Act. This is the law that says that service animals and ESAs are permitted to be in the cabin of the airplane with the handler for no additional fee or pet cost and they are not required to go underneath the plane. Like with anything, I always recommend 
reading on the laws and knowing your rights because there are going to be people that are uneducated and you may have to educate a little so if you're both uneducated it just can be a mess so know your laws know your rights and you should be fine the next thing really quick is that every airline is different so do your research every airline has different rules and regulations and policies when it comes to traveling with your service animal so you just want to figure out what airline is going to be the best fit for you I personally really like Delta I have flown with them the last three years except one year I um, one trip I did fly JetBlue they were great but the airplane I just didn't like so I personally like to fly with Delta they've always been super nice and super accommodating so just do your research and figure out what's going to be the best airline for you and the fifth and a final thing before we get into the categories is be prepared airports and airplanes and flying with your service dog and traveling with your service dog can be very stressful and there's so many situations that can happen there's so much going on and you just want to be prepared i'd rather be over prepared than under prepared because you don't want to be one of those people that are at the airport and you find out you can't board because something happened or you know you don't have the right papers or whatever so be prepared and that is my all-time biggest tip so the first category I want to talk about is booking your flight so this usually is pretty simple you're gonna once you figure out what airline you want to fly and what you know plane you're taking you book your ticket just normal you book your seat you pay for your ticket you're all good once you have your flight booked you're gonna go ahead and call the airline and talk to the disability services at this point you're going to let them know that you will be flying with your service animal they usually will ask you um, is it a service animal or is it an ESA and if you say service animal they usually will ask you know what task the dogs perform and along with that I usually get asked what breed my dog is and how much they weigh approximately just because they want to put it on the ticket I guess um, like I said that's just been my experience with Delta at this time you can also request seating accommodations for disability seating or bulkhead seating these seats usually um, are great for bigger service dogs these seats usually have extra leg space for your dog to lay in to be more comfortable and I also usually try to add in there and request a window seat just because it makes it easier for me and Daisy the next thing when booking your ticket is like I said every airline has different policies they may require you to fill out some paperwork such as um, you know acknowledging that your dog is trained or you know with ESAs there's like sometimes forms that your psychiatrist needs to fill out so usually the airline on their website will have that policy so that's something to check into and you can always ask when you call and just so you guys know whenever I mention the word paperwork I'm referring to your doctor's you know vet records or any forms that the airline may have you fill out I am in no way referring to any registrations certifications or IDs because if you don't know in the US those are fake they have no legal standing and all those registry websites are scams so <laughs> that's what I mean when I say papers or paperwork I also would like to add that with your doctor's note they usually are only good for one year so you need to renew them yearly the next category I want to talk about is the training of your dog this is very important because like I said airports are very busy and you want to make sure that your dog is well trained to be in this sort of environment now if you have kind of like a newer service dog that's younger you know that's never experienced this before this um, section may be good for you obviously if you have an older more experienced service dog this you know the airport may be a breeze um, so first and foremost I would like to point out that service dogs in training are not covered um, so you may have to label them as an ESA for the flight depending on 
the age of the dog and how long they've been in training. However, I will say, under the ADA, the definition of a service dog is a dog that is task trained. So technically, as long as your dog is potty trained, knows basic obedience, and knows at least one task, they are qualified to be labeled as a service dog. So my first year flying, Daisy had been in training for about a year, and she knew well, at least one task. She knew more, but she knew at least one task and was very well obedience trained and was potty trained. So I was able to label her label her as a service dog. When it comes to the training, however, you do want to make sure that your dog is solid or almost completely solid in basic obedience, meaning they know how to heal properly, they're not going to be pulling, they know how to sit, they know how to down, and they know how to do stays, you know, and especially long down stays for the flight itself. On top of that, another great training is distraction and focus training. There's so much going on in the airport, there's so many people, there's going to be a lot happening that you want to work on distraction training and focus training with your dog so that way they're not overly distracted and they can easily focus on you and do their job. And the last part of training would be socialization. This means socializing them to you know, different people, being touched by people, being in a lot large crowd, you know, being around other animals because there are going to be other animals probably and loud noises and anything that's associated with an airport or an airplane. Um, if your airport is close by to you, a lot of handlers sometimes will do a few training sessions at the airport before their flight. I, however, wasn't able to do that, so I just kind of took my chances. Next, I'm going to talk about briefly checking in. So this is fairly simple. When you get to the airport, you're going to go to the check-in counter. This is where you get your boarding passes and you check your luggage underneath the plane. So when you go up, you know, when you present your tickets, you check your luggage, whatever, your boarding pass usually will say that you have a service animal with you. Um, so it's important to check for that because when you board at the gate, they will also look for that as well. At this time, they also may ask you the two service dog questions, which are, is it a service animal and what tasks are they trained to perform? They also at this time may ask for any of your paperwork that um, you are required to fill out or show if there is any for you in your case. So that's usually it, that's usually simple. Um, I usually have, I have always traveled with my mom, so I don't usually have to worry about that, um, but they will usually ask my mom and then I'm usually right there, so I usually answer the questions about Daisy. Next is TSA. TSA is usually the most stressful, at least for me, and especially this year because I am going to be 31 weeks pregnant, so I'm a little stressed out about it. However, it's fairly simple when you think about it. It's just, it's very fast paced and there is a lot of people, so everyone's throwing bags around, so you just want to be prepared. <laughs> If you are in a wheelchair or have any kind of mobility issues, usually there's a handicap line um, for you to go into. Usually I get pulled out of the regular line anyways because they see I have a service dog. Um, but you're just going to wait in line, you know, you put your bags on the conveyor belt and they'll pull you over to a different area because you're not going to go through the regular like scanning machines. For TSA, they actually have you go through the old doorway metal detectors. Now, you can always say if you're not comfortable going through the metal detectors, for whatever reason, you can always opt to be padded down. Um, I've always just gone through the metal detectors, however. Next, you also want to decide whether you're going to keep your dog's gear on or take it off. However, do not be fooled. You are not required to take your gear off or have them unleashed or whatever. You can keep whatever gear you want on your dog. Usually if your gear stays on, they do have to pat down the dog, but typically if you take it off, they do not have to pat down the dog. 
So it is up to you and you know whether you need your dog's gear to stay on or your preference or whatever. There are two ways you can go through the metal detector. You can either send your dog through first and then you follow through or what a lot of people do and what I do is I put the dog in a sit stay. I walk through. I usually have a long leash. I walk through. They clear me and I call Daisy through. She comes through and usually she beeps because of her gear. So then I just have her stand and stay and they will pat down her vest and just check under her vest to make sure that I'm not hiding anything. And then after that, they will swab your hands for any kind of explosive bomb residue, get that checked. And usually they'll say, okay, you're cleared. You go get your things that went through the scanning machine and then you're on your way. Now I will say, last year coming home, the TSA agent that was there did not know how to handle a service dog. They didn't know what to do, so I kind of had to be like, you just kind of pat her down. You know, I walk through, call her through, you pat her down, you swab my hands. So they had to call other people over to kind of do it, so, because he didn't know how to do it. So, like I said, there are people in the airport that work there and that don't work there that are uned that are uneducated. So just be patient. At the gate, once you find your gate, usually they open the counter an hour before boarding. So when they open the counter, you can go up and request pre-boarding because you're traveling with your service animal and usually there's no issues. I've never had an issue. Um, it just makes it nice because you can get settled on the plane and not have to rush with a whole bunch of people to get on the plane. When they call for pre-boarding, you go up, you board the plane, you know, you walk down the long haul. Now, some dogs, um, you know, boarding the plane can be a little scary. Um, the first year traveling, Daisy did absolutely fine, was not spooked at all. The second year last year, however, going there there was a gush <laughs> can you tell I'm pregnant I'm out of breath going there there was a gush of wind and it spooked her so she kind of backed up so I just had to give her a treat and praise her and say everything's okay and then we just boarded the plane and she was fine when you get on the plane once you find your seat you will put your dog in a downstay in a tuck position um, at your feet now I will say smaller service dogs um, or your ESA may be allowed to sit on your lap however they are not allowed on the seat that is very important they are not allowed on the seat now really quickly some extra things about seating the dog cannot be in the aisle they cannot be sticking out meaning their foot their tail their head any part of them they cannot be blocking the aisle or sticking out. That is one of the reasons I also request a window seat if possible because I don't have to worry about that. And like I just mentioned, the dog cannot be in the seat. They must be on the ground at your feet or if they're small enough, in your lap. Now I do know that if your dog is like gigantic and super big, that it takes up the space of two seats. You may be required to purchase an extra seat. And lastly, just a reminder that fear and allergies to dogs are not valid reasons to deny your service animal. So if there's somebody near you that's scared of dogs or has an allergy, or let's just say there's another service animal or let's say an ESA, you know, that's going bonkers over your service dog, because I have seen videos of that, they have to accommodate both people. So if let's just say, for example, I was sitting in the disability seats and the person behind me was allergic to dogs. They'd have to accommodate both people. So they may have to say the person with the allergy may need to switch seats and go to like towards the back of the plane because I obviously need the accommodation for the more leg space with the disability seats. So. Just a reminder, they do have to accommodate you. And as long as your dog is well behaved and is not posing a threat or anything like that, they are permitted on the plane. And now to kind of close out the video, I just have a few extra tips 
to help make traveling with your service dog a little easier. So the first thing is to have a folder with all your your paperwork for the flight. Um, you know, your seats, your tickets, um, you know, the laws, and um, you know, obviously the paperwork that I mentioned earlier, like your doctor's note, your vet records, all of that stuff, just put it into one folder so it's somewhere safe that you know you can just grab it and it's all there. The second thing, which is kind of common sense, would be make sure your dog is well groomed. Nobody likes a smelly dog. Nobody likes a dog that has long matted fur. Daisy always gets groomed short in the summer and I always make sure that I give her a bath before we go and I brush her out so she's all nice and clean for the flight. Some handlers do opt to put doggy like fragrance perfume on their dogs. I do have one that's vanilla scented. That is your preference, but some people do that because they don't smell like dog. <laughs> The next thing is that I really recommend having a hands-free leash. This is going to be nice because it's going to be long for when you go through TSA or on the plane. It can still be attached at your waist and you're still attached to your dog. And it's also nice because if you need to use both hands, you can, you know, drop the leash and it's you're still attached to your dog. So I really like hands-free leashes and I really recommend getting one if you don't have one for traveling. On top of that, it is really important to have a travel water bowl because your dog, you don't want them to get dehydrated. So having a collapsible water bowl is extremely important. Kind of going off of that, the morning of or a few hours before your flight, you have to plan it right. You should cut off the food that you give them because you don't want any accidents or anything that's going to upset their tummy while you're flying so usually if you cut off their food the morning of if you have like an afternoon flight or like in the afternoon if you have a night flight um and make sure they do poop before you go on the plane and then as you get closer to the flight make sure you limit their water um and they empty their bladder before you board the plane most airports that i know of do have doggy relief areas or there is grass somewhere for your dog to go if they need to. Um, just make sure that they're all emptied out before the flight, especially if like in my case you have a long flight that's like six hours long. The next thing is that treats are encouraged, at least for me. No matter how well of a trained service dog you have, the airport is such a different environment and like I said there's so many distractions and so much is happening it's just always nice to have treats handy for you to reward your dog or give them you know and that also kind of helps hold them over if they are hungry but it's not going to be enough to make them have to go and the last thing that I recommend bringing is a blanket for your dog to lay on and it's good to use for the command place um, you know, where you tell them to place on the mat and they just kind of curl up on that. It just kind of helps the dog so that way they don't get confused and you can tell them to place on the mat and they know that's where they have to stay and they don't like sprawl out. And I recommend having a blanket that they are used to or that smells like home just to make them more comfortable too. And just kind of really quick, like I mentioned about sprawling out, if you can, while you're waiting to board, let them sprawl out. If they are a bigger dog and they're going to be tucked in um, for the whole flight, maybe letting them stretch their legs, walk them a little bit before you board. Okay, so my camera got off again. I really hope I got everything, <laughs> but that's all the things that I have for tips and tricks when traveling with your service dog. I hope it made you guys a little less stressed out about traveling with your dog and you guys have a nice flight. Um, if you have any questions, you can comment them down below and I will try to answer them best as possible. And there's tons of other videos on YouTube about flying with your service dog. So, yeah. Like I said, I'm going to be traveling to Utah. I'm leaving on Wednesday. I'm actually going for the Rose International Doll Show. Um, and I will be vlogging my experience again. So. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, and I will see you guys next time in the next video. Bye!